as a college student, I was a sophomore at University of Wisconsin in Madison, um, pursuing one career that I knew was not right for me. And so I'd spend a lot of my time watching movies. And they had a little theater in Madison that showed all these great foreign filmmakers from Germany, from France, from Italy. Uh, and the stories that they were telling were so compelling and so unlike Hollywood movies that I said, I'd love to be able to do that. I'd love to be able to tell our stories and create a, a bridge between the white culture and black culture. Uh, growing up in Wisconsin, uh, well, yes, Yes, growing up in Wisconsin shaped my career in a very special way. I'm from the Midwest. My very first Hollywood movie was a movie called Cooley High that was about a kid from Chicago. I lived 90 miles away from Chicago and so I was able to work with the writer who created the story and bring it to life in storytelling ways that related to my life completely. Um, so uh, the answer to that question is yes, where you come from definitely uh, influences how you see things and how you uh, the, and the stories that you tell. I don't find filmmaking laborious at all. Um, uh, for me, every part of the process is so infinitely interesting because it challenges you to um, keep creative. From shooting, you know, you might not be, uh, you're always struggling to get all the shots before the sun disappears, you know, or, or before, if it's nighttime, before the sun comes up. And sometimes you have to sacrifice certain scenes that you had in mind. So you're constantly figuring out, okay, how can I make this better? Same thing in the post-production process. You're always looking for ways to tell the story effectively and efficiently. In making movies and making television, um, there's a certain amount of patience that you have to have. Um, it's all working with people. You're, you're putting your team together. You're work, sometimes you're working with people you don't know. And so just for everybody to get on the same page so that their thinking is aligned, so that your cameraman and your gaffer and your actors are making the same movie that you are making uh, requires a lot of uh, communication and a lot of patience. Such a sense of self-centeredness. Um, he knew who he was. He was not intimidated by uh, seasoned uh, Hollywood actors and watching him work uh, some of the actors you know would come up to me and say yeah that kid's gonna be a star you know and I, I say yeah I knew it <laughs> so um, there there's more more than that uh, in terms of the actors that I've worked with um, that I love my wife Lauren Jones uh, played the uh, almost a wordless part in the movie Car Wash. She played the hooker who was in the cab and in the in the restroom. And she was so subtle and so real in her portrayal of that character that the uh, we shot it on location uh, at a real car wash in Los Angeles. And when she came on the set, the hookers around the block started calling their pimps to say, you know, who is this? <laughs> so 
<laughs> so that's how real she was. So um, I, I love working with so many of, of my actors that, that uh, they, they just brought way more to the film project than I had imagined. Well, I've worked with so many great actors um, for, that I enjoyed working with. For example, uh, Al Pacino, Denzel Washington, uh, Sam Jackson, um, Richard Pryor, uh, Lauren Jones. Um, and they were all wonderful in their own ways. But for example, Al Pacino. Um, I put him in his first Broadway play called Does the Tiger Wear a Necktie. When he came to audition, um, he was reading for a part that was written for a totally different kind of character, and he was so brilliant. I turned to the playwright and said, I don't care what you wrote, this is the guy, you know, that we need. And, and watching him work as a young 20-year-old actor and how specific he was and how e explosive he was and how genuine he was through the entire play was just remarkable. That's a good question. Um, the most... <laughs> uh, okay. What is the most difficult part of being a director? The, the toughest part of being a director is convincing the money people uh, and the studios that the story that you want to tell is going to make them money. And I've, I've had through my entire career from Cooley High to Car Wash, the studio saying, how do we sell this thing, you know? Uh, <laughs> and them not believing that it's going to be a success. So just convincing the money uh, that they're going to be good, that you're going to make them money, that's the most difficult part of being a director. The rest is, is hard, but it's fun. I never get angry. I, I, I guess I'm known for having a kind of smooth, uh, way of dealing with every situation no matter how difficult it is because I never take things too seriously I don't you know I don't pull my hair out and scream and holler because I know there's a way to fix it you know so. um, I can give the advice that I was given uh, by my directing mentor in college. Uh, he said, if you really want to be a good director, go to New York and act for five years. I hated acting, <laughs> but, but I went to New York and I acted for one year. I, I couldn't make it past one year. I had to get, I had to convince somebody to let me direct a play. But the point is, that learning what your actors need to give good performances by actually having to do it yourself is great training for any director. So study everything that you can study about uh, film and filmmakers before you. Get involved in anything in uh, whether it's theater or film just be find a way to get yourself on the scene whether you're paid or not just be in the mix and then people will discover what you're capable of doing you got to continually show people what you are able to do until they trust you make it uh, with the technology today that where you have the whole production on your cell phone. You can tell your own stories with minimal cost. Just get your buddies together and go ahead and make that film. Make a series of them. Keep working, keep developing your craft.